Good morning. Hello, my friends. Heidi Mitro here with When You Lead Coaching and Consulting. For those of you that this is your first broadcast with me, welcome. Again, my name is Heidi. I'm so glad you're here. This is the show where leaders go to get their butt kicked a little bit and get into gear. <laughs> okay, so how's that for an intro? So on today's show, we are going to be talking about a phrase that may be holding you back. And there are two rules in the Metro household. So I have uh, my wonderful, amazing partner, Mike, and we've got three kiddos, um, an almost 14-year-old as of tomorrow, 12 and 9. And there are two phrases in our home that are not allowed. One of them is, that's not fair. Um, how many of you are parents? If you are, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> Drop a little uh, heart in the comments if you've got kiddos. And <sighs> that's not fair shows up a lot. And it used to start, uh, this that's not fair comment started when we were watching Wheel of Fortune. And we watched Wheel of Fortune a lot when they were kids. It helped with letters. It helped with um, just puzzles. And our, our kids love puzzles. Anyhow, whenever someone would uh, win a trip, all of our kiddos would go, that's not fair. And this is coming from kids who have been to Mexico multiple times for Christmas. We take annual trips, right? Like these are well-traveled children. This is not as though they don't receive <laughs> the opportunities for travel. So instead of that's not fair, I introduced a phrase of that's for me. And here's what happened when, when that started in our house. What ended up happening was our kiddos got excited for the people that won the trip and it got them interested in researching where those trips were going. So when we would go to the library, they would pick out books on, you know, Hawaii or Mexico or the Virgin Islands or whatever, whatever Pat Sajak had had won or had gifted to these people. Right. And so it became this opportunity for them to go, yeah, I want that, too. And what I have loved about this, and they they still say it to this day, this has been years and years and years of them um, saying this, that's for me. What we have discovered is because they are witnessing someone else doing something, they recognize that it's possible. And it's so possible that someone else already has it. And so then it has become, that's for me. So if you see someone, especially as high achievers, if you see someone who's got a great marriage, if you see someone who's got a kick-ass job that they love, if you see someone who is parenting in a way that inspires you or doing business in a way that inspires you, instead of this old, outdated, reptilian brain response of that's not fair, which by the way, if you start there, that's fine. It's not the first thought that matters. It's the second one. So if the first thought is that's not fair, shift it to that's for me, and then get busy. How did they do it? How does this work? Not only do I want that, but someone else is the visual representation of this is possible. <laughs> it's a total reframe. So that's not fair is not allowed in the Metro household. Here's the second phrase that's not allowed, and it absolutely pertains to travel. We can't afford it. That is the other phrase that is not allowed inside the Metro household. I can't afford it is you might as well just use the F word consistently. It's that offensive to me. <laughs> we can't afford it. I can't afford it is holding you back. Now, that is not to say that there isn't some validity to this, right? Math is math. Math is math. And inside of our, our coaching world, so I have We've got two wings to what we're doing inside of When You Lead. We have this coaching wing, which is for really beautiful high achievers who are, you know, the, the people who get it done. They're the perfectionists. They, they may tend to suffer from imposter syndrome. They're highly, highly capable. And there are things that are holding them back. Then we have the consulting side, which is where we support teams with leadership, specifically using the Colby Index. Those are the two ways that we support people. And what ends up happening when you're working with high achievers is they have big goals and big goals requires big investments of time and also money. And there may be times where you are looking at what you would like to do. Maybe it is travel. Maybe it is hiring a coach. Maybe it is a new car or whatever else you might be looking at. I can't afford it is a BS excuse. I can't afford it is a lower brain thought. I can't afford it really, truly is a very dramatic way of thinking. 
and I'm dramatic. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I, I, I am a, a, dra a dramatic person. However, here's, here's the reframe. Instead of, I can't afford it, which is a period statement. The way that we speak about it in our house is a question. How can I afford this? How can we afford this? So when the kiddos are watching, you know, Wheel of Fortune and somebody wins a trip to Fiji and they start with no fare, wait, that's for me. And then they go, hey, can we go? And I look at our travel bank account because we do have one. And I see that the cost of the trip and what's in that bank account don't match. The trip is more. That's a factual thing. I'm not telling you to deny reality. What I'm saying is turn it into a question. How can we afford this? So something that we do inside of When You Lead, and I'm a huge word nerd, I have been since I was a kid, is we do a lot of what do, what do the words mean and where, where do they come from? I love language. I, I'm very intentional when, when I use language. So let's look at the word afford. OK, we're going to break this down. I'm going to teach you what this means and then we're going to reframe it. So I got to put on my glasses. Anyone else at this stage of life? Um, can you just give me a little, a little love of, of, of if you're in this stage? OK, definition of afford to manage or bear without serious detriment or to make available, to give forth, to provide naturally or inevitably. Oh, inevitable is one of my new favorite words, by the way. We'll talk about that on another episode. So that's the definition, to manage or bear without serious detriment. So there may be, in fact, some times where if you're looking at math and you're looking at what you want and how much it costs, they don't match. That's just a fact. We don't need to bring all of the feelings into it and freak ourselves out around money. It's not what we need to do. We can then turn that statement into a question, how can I afford this? Let's talk about the etymology of the word afford. So etymology, for those of you that are new to that word, etymology is like, what's the root word of this word? Where does it come from? And what was the original use for it? You are going, write this down. You are going to love this definition. You are going to immediately have a different relationship with money. Okay? Just, okay. It's old English. Here is the etymology of the word afford to further, to further. Oh, there's something about like, I can't afford it that makes it feel stuck. It makes it feel like, oh, end of conversation. My wants are going to torture me for the rest of my life. I can't afford it. Life's not fair. Look at, look at what they have on Instagram and I don't have it. When you use the true definition of afford, which is to further something, and you go, how can I afford this? How can I further this dream? How can I further this vision? And I will tell you that we are in a huge growth spurt inside of When You Lead, like huge. I am on a growth edge that is making me uncomfortable on the daily. <laughs> There's so many changes and shifts. And I absolutely 100% walk my walk and talk my talk. And it is excruciating at times. And when I'm looking at, there are two team members that I want to bring on right now. And I am looking at what that would be in payroll. So I'm legit going through this right now. And if I look at my bank account right now, what they would require and what's in my bank account don't match. And I have done the big investing in coaching, right? So those of you in the coaching space, if you've, if you've hired a coach, if you are in corporate and you've had a consulting company come in, you know these are big numbers when you're working with a coach or a consultant. And I happily ask you to step into a high level investment. I do. And, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm okay being aspirational. I'm okay with you going, I want that. That's for me. How can I make this happen? How can I further this relationship? And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that at the end of the show, to further that for free, by the way. And if you can't afford that, we should talk. Okay. When, when you're talking with big numbers like this and you go, I want that. That's for me. How can I move this forward? How can I take something that is aspirational and make it now? And so when I'm looking at these, these contractors that I have, 
and I want to move them into these positions that are meant for them. Like they are, they are using their Colby. They're using their human design. They are, their values are so, I have goosebumps thinking about it. Their values are so aligned with what we're doing inside of when you lead and math. So what I'm doing is going, how can I move this forward in the audience today? <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Heidi. I am a recovering black and white thinker. I am a recovering all or nothing thinker. So here's what I have done because I want this. This is for me. I want them on my staff. I want them in their roles. They will thrive in their roles. We're stair-stepping them in. We're compromising. We're having conversations. We're mapping it out. How can this look? And then I'm on the back end of the business going, how many people get served? I am not motivated by money. Don't get it twisted. I love money, but I'm not motivated by wads of cash. I am motivated by impact. I am motivated by transformation. I am absolutely lit up, especially for high achieving women to own their worth and then invest it in their communities. That's what I'm hot for. In my coaching community, we just got back from a retreat. I'm going to tell you a story about this. The first time I held a retreat, I think was eight or nine years ago. And it was, it was okay. It was an okay retreat, but I had to do it. I had to get the first one under my belt. I had to learn a lot. I had to recognize that I should not be cooking all of the meals. <laughs> and I found a retreat center. And last week, 10 of us gathered at Arc Retreat Center, Arc Retreat, Com Arc Retreat Community in Stanchfield, Minnesota. This was my inner, inner circle. And we've been working together, most of us for a year. We have been on this journey of knowing our purpose, our values, and getting crystal clear on boundaries. Stay tuned. I'm going to teach you how to get crystal, crystal clear boundaries. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. The women that came to this retreat know who they are, their values. Oh, if you ever have wanted to be with a group of people who know who they are and they know their purpose and they are compelled to bring it to this planet, that's, that's what I got to play in over the last several days. And it was such tremendous transformation. We had one woman get a job offer while we were there where her income, I think she, she got like a 30% ridiculous raise and then profit share. I mean, it was just this ridiculous offer and we all freaked out when she got this gig. She signed the documents when we were there. By the way, we should all be either group dating or we should be doing job interviews as a group. The amount of support that these women provided, the amount of integrity that these women have is astounding. And part of the reason that they were there is each of them has invested $2,000 a month in working with me. And I know that that's crazy. And I know that that's aspirational for many, many people. I also know that the return on investment when you make the decision of how can I afford this? So this particular woman made her investment back and then some on repeat for years and years and years to come. Had she shown up last October, and I hope you're watching, sweetheart, what a joy you are. <laughs> what an inspiration you are. Had she come to me last October and said, I can't afford it. Where would she be now? Instead, she said, how can I afford it? How can I make this work? And then what she did is she showed up every single call. She showed up. She invested in herself. She took every single aspect of her life and moved it forward. She furthered every single aspect of her life. Had she said, I can't afford this, she would have missed out on this transformation. Now, I understand math. I understand if you see something high ticket and you look at your bank account and they don't match, that that's factual. I get that. I, what I also know to be true is that if you go deep within your heart and you go, do I actually want to further this? And you start asking the question, how can I afford it? You activate your reticular activating system. That's a nerdy phrase. But what, it, what that means is your brain is going to start to look for that evidence. And your body is going to start shifting. I've had people sell stuff in order to work with me. And then they get a raise within like month three. I've had women say, I don't, I don't need this job. I, wanna, I want a different job. And then they get a different job and they are able to invest in, in themselves. <clears throat> 
here's what's really, really important about your willingness to move things forward. Your, your, and it is a willingness. I'm not even going to say that. Yeah, I don't even care if you're ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm less interested in, in your willingness than your readiness because willing means that you are willing to be surprised. Willing means that you're willing to do things differently. And if you are looking at your life and you have continued to make the same decisions and get the same results and then beat yourself up and have imposter syndrome and you look awesome on paper, but you feel like a failure on the back end, you got to do something differently. I happen to think that coaching and consulting is the way to go for that. When we were on retreat over last week, what I was really, really struck by was the women's willingness to change. And when you're on retreat, when you are out of your element, when your rhythm is off, your routine is off, your responsibilities have shifted, you have made yourself available in a different way. It's one of the reasons I love retreating is because it gets you out of your ordinary and allows for the extraordinary to come in. And God did it. This retreat in particular, the amount of transformation, the amount of healing, the amount of laughing, my face, these women are funny and they have all been through it. We are at a season of our lives in our 40s and 50s where you've been through it. And I'm not talking about stubbing your toe and you know your car breaking down. I'm talking about tremendous loss, divorce, feelings of failure, loss of job, loss of wealth. These women have been in it been brought to their freaking knees by the world and still said, how can I make this work? How, how can I invest in myself? I know what I want. That's for me. How can I bring it forth? And they do it by investing in themselves and they do it by investing in their communities. And it is a privilege to watch this happen. And here is why they can do this. And this is this where I'm shifting into what I'm going to be doing next week. And I want you to come. The reason that they are having such huge transformations is because they have kick ass boundaries. I'm serious. <laughs> I've been coaching for several years now. I had a massage therapy practice for a dozen years. I have worked with the best of the best. I have worked with the highest achievers who, if you were to look at their life, you'd go, that's for me. And behind closed doors, they feel like absolute garbage. They feel like absolute phonies. The imposter syndrome is huge. And here's what I know to be true. When they get crystal, crystal clear about their values, when they remember that they are purpose, because you are, and then we cultivate their big, bold boundaries, their lives shift. And so I've been in the coaching world long enough to make some really poor investments in people who made a lot of promises and you didn't get a return on investment. I've also had some unbelievable free trainings that have changed my life. And so as I have been thinking about how I want to move forward in my own business, next week I'm doing something new. I'm doing something I've never done before because I watched a couple of my favorite coaches really deliver unbelievable information. And I was like, that's for me. I want my, I want my community, whether you are investing $2,000 or $5,000 or $9,000 a month with me, or if you are coming into my community and right now it's aspirational right now, it's a, that's for me. How can I make it happen? But we're not together yet. I want you to get the same value. I want you to get the same information because when high achievers are supported and in community with one another, the world changes. And I hear this phrase a lot. Here's another phrase for you. If I don't do it, it won't get done. That should be another phrase that I should eliminate from the Mitro households. <laughs> if I don't do it, it won't get done. Here's what really won't get done if you don't do it. Equity work, right? Diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Equal pay for equal work. Children being supported in their schools. Children being safe. That is the stuff that if we don't do it, it won't get done. So we have to shift high achievers away from, I have to be in control of all of these other things because that's what culture tells me to, to go, nope, I know my purpose. I know my values and I am going to have such crystal clear boundaries that I can bring my passion forward. That's what we're doing. So next week, Monday through Friday, I'm going to be hosting a big, bold boundaries challenge. Now, 
Some of you in this community are information junkies. Some of you have never met me before. <laughs> Hello, my name is Heidi. <laughs> this is not about you gathering more information. I am so tired of high achievers gathering information. It's time to use it. You know enough. So the reason that we're doing a challenge is so you take action. Boundaries are the key to you being able to afford things. Boundaries are the key for you being able to go, that's for me, and actually get it. Boundaries are your opportunity to go, that in the world needs to be changed, and if not me, who? If something is lighting you up and pissing you off and you know it's going to benefit your community, that's on you. You have to have boundaries in order to do it. The reason I could go on retreat with these incredible women was because I have boundaries in my schedule. We also have boundaries in our marriage. We have boundaries in our family. We had boundaries on retreat. You better believe that when 10 women get together, that the propensity for codependency is real. <laughs> I, at the out, outset of retreat, I'm like, you are not here to save anyone. Everybody get back in your own bubble and your own energy. Boundaries are the way that we heal. Boundaries say, this is as far as I go. Boundaries say, I am totally capable of doing that and I don't have any interest or capacity for it. So next week, we have a pop-up community in Facebook. I'm hosting a Big Bold Boundaries Challenge. I want you to learn it and I want you to do it. So the videos are live. They'll be up for 24 hours and then there's the challenge. We're going live every day at 1 Central and I am going to light it up. This is a free challenge. I want you to get to the end of the challenge and go, oh my God, this is changing my life. And it was free. I want you to have this. I have been really, really disillusioned with the coaching world, like really disillusioned. And I am at a space in my career, I'm at a space in my practice where I am so fully supported by the clients that I have. I truly am. The consulting piece of what we're doing for, for corporations and small businesses is life-affirming and life-changing and culture-shifting. And I'm at a season where it's like, what is the distillation? What is the keystone thing that women and high achievers need to know in order to change their lives? And it is boundaries. This is the best work that I have ever done. Bar none, the best content that I have put out. It was completely downloaded. And I, every single day, I'm going to teach you one of the F's of boundaries. Yes, we're going to F your boundaries. <laughs> I have to be a little cheeky. we got to be a little provocative. That's, that's, I'm, I like a little spice. I'm dramatic. I've been called that a lot. I, yes, that's accurate. You're going to learn the F's of boundaries. And then every single day, you're going to have a challenge to achieve. Because I don't want you to learn it and sit on it. I'm tired of that. I am. I'm so tired of well-intentioned, really well-read people not doing anything. So you're going to learn it and then you're going to do it. We're going to meet every day at 1 Central inside of this pop-up Facebook group. And here I'm going to spoil the ending. At the end of those five days, I'm going to invite you in to my Big Bold Boundaries Mastermind. Yes, I am. Some of you are going to be able to afford it immediately. Some of you are going to go, this is how much it is. And I have this in my bank account. Some of you are going to go, oh my God, that's for me. <sighs> Factually, they don't match. And then you're going to shift. How can I afford this? How can I further this? For some of you, that may mean you get busy side hustling. You figure out how you're going to make that investment. For some of you, you're not going to be able to join until next round. I'm okay with that. How can I afford it puts you in a position to be open to the universe, to be open to your calling. How can I afford this? I can't tell you how many women I've worked with who've like cleaned out closets to make that first investment. It's so funny. Not only do you make room, but you are going to receive the skills and the tools. Ugh, you have to have the skill set, the mindset, and the tool set. You have to go three for three. That's what we do inside of when you lead coaching and consulting. You have to turn it on upstairs differently. You have to know what your body is saying. You've got to have the skill. You've got to have the tool and you've got to have the mindset. We got to go three for three. Okay, I get hot when I do these. <laughs> Woo! Okay, if you want to join the big, bold boundaries challenge, it's free, legit. Best content I've ever put out and it's free. That's where I'm at. 
I want you to have it. I want your life to change. Even if you never meet me, even if we never cross paths in person, even if you never come on retreat or come into the mastermind, if you come to this challenge, your life will change. Oh, I, it gets me like Misty even like having healthy, vibrant, dynamic, really beautiful boundaries is the key to you having the life that you want. Go to HeidiMetro.com backslash backslash challenge. I'll put it in the chat here. I'll put it in, in the notes underneath. All you have to do is sign up for the challenge and then show up. You sign up, you show up, and you do the homework every single day. And by the end of next week, your life will be different. I promise you. And I do not break promises, period. You sign up, you show up, you do the homework, your life will be different a week from now. Okay. All right. We did it. <laughs> we're, we're coming up on that half hour mark. If you are curious what it's like to work with me, um, I would love, I would love to hear from you. If you've got a company where the culture blows, let's talk. If you have a life where you're looking at it and you're like, this is not for me, and you have pictures outside of you of what the life you want looks like and you don't know how to bridge the gap, I'm your girl. That's your sacred crossroads and I can help you. If you want to get a, a bigger flavor of who I am, come next week to the Big Bold Boundaries Challenge. And then I'm going to go live here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. So next week on Tuesday, you'll get me live twice. Okay? All right. I want you to invite your friends to the Big Bold Boundaries Challenge, especially those of you who have friends who are headed into the end of the year and are freaking out. If you've got those people in your life, specifically women, who are the ones who buy all the gifts, they do all the travel plans, they're freaking out about, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and the holiday season in December, you, you have to have this challenge before the holidays. So tag your girls in this. <laughs> And, and let's, let's have a totally different end of Q4. Deal? Okay. I will see you live at the Big Bold Boundaries Challenge on, at 1 o'clock Central on Monday. Or you can catch me and you can catch me here live at 10 Central next Tuesday for When You Lead Live. All right? I'll see you soon. Be kind to yourselves.